Highfield Princess has been a wonderful mare for, for me and the yard and the owners. Top class racehorses are really, really hard to come by. So when a filly comes along like this and uh, John Fairley buying the mare in full for 19,000, um, unraced at two, and, every, and she's been here all the time. Um, so for everyone in the yard and, and for the owners, it's, it's, it's surreal really. And what she's done has been unbelievable. Sometimes when you have a good horse, it's happening and you're on a journey and then when they're gone, you think, oh my God. But we're enjoying her very much and we do appreciate what she has done and what she is doing very much. This year, she's run fantastically well. Royal Ascot twice without winning. Um, she ran really well in the King Stands and three days later in the, Go in the Platinum Jubilee and this year also at Glorious Goodwood, she was spectacular. Highfield Princess leads inside the final furlong and draws away. Highfield Princess, she's all class and Highfield Princess comes clear to win the King George. She had a hard race in the Abbey, as, as you know well, you, you never have an easy race in, in any group race. And as you could see at halfway in the Abbey, you think, God, I don't know, will she win? But she toughed it out, battled out, and she was strong at the line. Um, we, we had the Breeders' Cup in our mind, um, as well as Hong Kong, but we thought uh, she had quite a hard race in the Abbey, so we decided to miss the um, Breeders' Cup and head to Hong Kong, and we feel we've done the right thing. She's training well, she's nice and fresh, she's fit. Um, I took her away for a race course gallop three weeks ago. I was pleased with her. We're looking forward to it. It's a different challenge. You're taking on horses that they're, they're top class horses, but they, they, the form, um, the, equi, the equilateral form isn't there, if you know what I mean. But um, she's in a good place and we're looking forward to going. She travels really well. And from early on, um, when we were traveling her, we felt that that was one thing. It didn't bother her. She's a good traveler. Um, there's a lot of preparation goes into to, to traveling. So we've been preparing for this for a month. My son, Sean, and our apprentice, Gianluca Sana, they're going. So when she gets there, uh, Sean and Gianluca are there to oversee her. And she'll be on the track, all being well, on Monday morning at Chartin. We're just gonna tick along. I think it's absolutely imperative as a trainer that you should try and um, sell your trade all over the world. The world is a small place now um, and the prize money around the world is absolutely fantastic. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to have some good racehorse to travel the world because it's, it's great for the owner, it's great for the horse and it's great for us. Um, so I think it's so, so important. I mean, as well as going to the Philly, going to Hong Kong, we're sending two horses to Bahrain to compete over the next three months. They're two very good horses in their own right, and they'll be competing for um, very good prize money. So, um, we're, so we're looking forward to that. But it is terribly important to, um, to campaign your, your horses worldwide um, to, to promote your yard.